Nvidia stock is up roughly 5% after hours after both AMD and Microsoft reported earnings. Unfortunately, Microsoft is down roughly 2.7% after hours, but we do see that AMD is up roughly 7.6%. On today's episode, I want to take a closer look at the amazing news, in my opinion, that both AMD and Microsoft shared that I think NVIDIA investors are going to be very excited about. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. All right, so before we look at the transcripts for what AMD and Microsoft said, if you've been watching my previous episodes, you know that I believe this week is kind of dictate where how NVIDIA kind of acts before earnings. And in my opinion, I think even though it's just the beginning of this earnings week, Microsoft and AMD are already pushing things in the right direction. And from what we heard of Google last week, I think Microsoft, I think Meta tomorrow and Amazon on Thursday are going to say the same thing. So right now I've become even more bullish of Nvidia at these prices. So let's take a closer look at why I believe that's the case. So we're going to start off with AMD and you guys know, right? AMD creates the MI300. They have an AI accelerator. So these, this is probably the best company to compare the AI market with. So what AMD kind of talks about in the AI market, I think can correlate really well with what Nvidia is seeing. And the first thing that AMD mentions is right now, looking ahead, the rapid advances in generative AI and developments of more capable models are driving demand for more compute across all markets. So right off the bat, we can see that generative AI demand is still pretty high. And obviously that bolts really well for AMD. Now, during the earnings call, there was a very important question about CapEx. And this is some of the big worries that we've heard in the past few days where, hey, look, cap companies are spending too much money on CapEx. Eventually, they're going to slow down. So a person, an uh, analyst asked Lisa Su what she thinks about this. And is that really an issue right now? And Lisa Su pretty much mentions that right now, the overview of AI investment is that they have to invest. I mean, industries have to invest because the potential of AI is so large to impact the way enterprises operate and all the stuff. So they think investment cycle will continue to be strong and it's going to continue to be strong for both GPUs, for both competitors, AMD and Nvidia, and also for ASIC solutions, which can also be bullish for a company like Broadcom and Marvell. So a lot to unpack there, right? The first thing is, this is what I've mentioned in previous episodes. AI is not a sole revenue number, right? It's not like you can see AI revenue. AI is helping all these companies improve their overall products. So when their core products are increasing and seeing a growth in revenue, that is in par with AI investments. So I think so many people are caught up of saying, hey, look, I want to see AI revenue and I want to see an AI revenue segment list, but that's not going to be the case. You have to see how they're incorporating AI into their core products, being in the back end or in the front end for customers and understanding if that is creating growth for them. We're going to see from Microsoft that that is the case. The second thing is this technology is now a necessity. At the end of the day, if a cloud server provider does not invest in AI chips, they're going to lag in forms of solution in cloud computings that they have, and they're going to lose market share. So right now, it is an mandatory to invest in AI chips. And I know I believe that that's truly the case. So for me, AI demand is strong, and I'm not worried about CapEx expending anymore. Lisa Su also kind of got a question about supply chain for AI chips. And she mentions that right now um, they were able to increase their supply to about 1 billion per quarter, but overall supply will still be tight and will remain tight through 2025. Obviously very bullish for Nvidia as this tells us that, hey, look, the market even for Nvidia is also probably going to be supply chain constrained. So there's still going to be more demand than supply in 2025, which bodes well for the visibility that Nvidia can provide for us in revenue. So I think right now things are pretty looking pretty, pretty good for Nvidia and obviously AMD. At the end, Lisa Su overall finishes that at the end, market continues to need more compute. So very overall bullish for the AI semiconductor market right now, especially for data centers. 
Now, I want to take a closer look at Microsoft. But before we go anywhere, if you want to learn more about the semiconductor market, I have two awesome semiconductor books. The first is kind of like an encyclopedia of public semiconductor companies. The second is a earnings insight of this current earnings that we're in right now. The great thing is both are living documents. So if you purchase now, whenever I update the book with new companies and new earnings, you will also get an updated version. I do have a sale right now. If you purchase both books, you do get $20 off at the at checkout automatically no code needed thank you for the support and if you want to learn about the semiconductor market i believe this will provide you with a lot and a lot of information check out more semiinvesting.com or you can see the product down here on my youtube page as well all right, so now let's take a closer look at what Microsoft had to say. And obviously, Microsoft is very important as they are a big spender in capital expenditure of AI infrastructure. And the first thing they mentioned that I want to showcase is they mentioned that their clouding growth included eight points from AI services where demand remained at higher than their overall capacity. So right now we can see that AI demand is still so much higher in forms of cloud computing. And if that's the case, then Microsoft and all these clouding players are gonna continue to invest in AI chips and buy NVIDIA GPUs and AMD GPUs. So, I mean, Microsoft is a big player in this cloud serving space. They are also one who has, in my opinion, one of the largest AI capacity. So if they are seeing this, I'm gonna guess Amazon is also gonna say the same thing. Now, in forms of capital expenditure, including finance leases, it was roughly $19 billion in line with expectations. Within that $19 billion, Microsoft mentions that cloud and AI-related spend represent nearly all of their total capital expenditure. Within there, roughly half is for infrastructure that they need, where they continue to build out and lease data centers. And the other half is kind of built for spending primarily on servers, CPUs, and GPUs to serve customer based on demand signals. They do mention for the fiscal year, the mix of their cloud and AI related spend was similar to quarter four. So a few things to unpack there, right? So the first thing they're mentioning is half of their, uh, of their spending is for a lot of land, right? So in my opinion, when I hear that, it tells me that even if this company... Right now, this company is investing in a lot of land to be able to build more AI servers and GPU servers and CPU servers. The great thing is once they buy that land, they can continue to build more servers within it, right? They're not going to pack it right off the bat. They're going to be able to build multiple data centers within that land. So let me just say this. If we ever do see a slowdown in CapEx in these big players, it doesn't necessarily mean that they slow down in GPU spending or CPU spending, they might have slowed down in purchasing of land because they have plenty of land to continue to build data center solutions. So something to keep in mind out that you can't just look at CapEx and say, hey, look, because CapEx is slowing down, then that automatically means bearish news for NVIDIA. While the market might perceive it as that, one needs to dig deeper and understand where the actual spending is going. They also meet, mentioned to meet the growing demand signal of their AI and cloud products. They will scale their infrastructure investments with fiscal year 2025 capital expenditure expected to be higher than fiscal year of 2024. Remember, 2024 was already an elevated year for Microsoft. So this means that they're going to spend more money within the next year on NVIDIA's AI chips. They do mention that these kind of expenses are dependent on demand signals and they could change throughout the year. So this is something that might create some bearish points as if they do slow down in expenditure a bit because of demand signals, then that might be a bearish case for NVIDIA. Not necessarily if they reduce CapEx, but if they reduce CapEx because of demand signals, that's where NVIDIA investors should really focus. They expect capital expenditure to increase on a sequential basis given their cloud and AI demand, as well as existing AI capacity constraints. So I think at the end of the day, both Microsoft and AMD shared what I would say very bullish news for NVIDIA. And in my opinion, we're going to continue to hear that companies are going to invest a lot in AI. We're going to continue to hear that supply is not able to keep up with demand. And we're going to continue to see that NVIDIA is going to continue to release amazing products in this space. So at the moment, I, I think AMD, NVIDIA at 109, 
even with the 5% boost after hours, is still sitting at attractive levels. Overall, my thoughts, I could be wrong, and I'm not saying go out there and buy it, but I just wanted to give my overall thoughts just in case you care. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good day, and see you next time.